another what sold. We are talking about the items that sold in our online shops, such as eBay and Poshmark, Ruby Lane, Etsy, all the different things that sold from the week of May 7th through 13th. So not that long ago. Um, just, I don't know, want to mention that eBay is scaring me a little bit. <laughs> Um, usually the April slowdown because of taxes and all that and spring break and, and things usually picks up a little bit better by now, but it's, it's been a little slow. As you can see, I have, I don't know, maybe eight sales on eBay for the whole week and at least four, possibly five of those were on the first day, Sunday, and the rest were just a trickle, like a sale here, a sale there. Anyway, um, you know, a lot of other resellers and resellers will talk to you about summer slowdown and it's definitely a thing. I mean, people do buy less online during the better weather and the summertime and they go, they're out and about, they're on vacation. They're not just kind of stuck to inside their house, looking at their phones and things like that. So it does slow down a bit, especially in the clothing, um, categories, I would say. So I, um, I'm glad I cross list. What can I say? A Vendu has been saving the day. I cross list and I'm glad I use other, um, platforms as well. So the cross listing for the sales this week was basically just eBay to Poshmark, um, Ruby Lane. Those are all independent things and the stuff on Etsy is all independent. It's not cross listed anywhere. So just having a variety of things and a variety of platforms, I think is definitely helps you get through slow times like this. Okay. So starting with eBay, I had this pair of vintage Sperry, uh, boat shoes and they were, I picked them up at a thrift store a while back. Took me a while to list them. I was, had been trying to research and it was kind of tricky to find the exact pair in my research. And, um, eventually they kind of just were in the to be listed pile. My husband took care of it and he went ahead. And so same thing, cause you couldn't really find comps. Um, we had the feeling they were older, you know, maybe eighties earlier than eighties. And, um, you know, they still make, of course, very top cider. Some, some styles it's, you know, it's not like the style changes a whole lot over the years. But there are collectors, and so we wanted to kind of, we, we tried to go high at first, and we figured we'd take whatever offer we could get. So someone sent us an $80 offer. Like I said, because sales have been kind of slow, we said 80 sounds good to us, and we went ahead and took that offer. So it was not $150, but it was $80, which was pretty good. I paid like $5 for the pair of shoes. The next item was a really nice full price sale, which I was happy for that, which was also good because I, I paid up for this. I remember at the thrift store, it's in kind of one of my swanky, swanky town thrifts. And it was new with tags. It's Peter Millar. It's a sweater vest and it was Merino wool and silk. And the original tag I don't remember what the price was like 189 or something like that. Let's see if we can get it. Nope. 168. So I, the thrift store had it priced at $30 and normally I wouldn't pay that much for a thrifted item, but because it was new with tags and because not just because it was Peter Millar, but because it was Merino wool and silk, I thought it would be worth it. So it, I tripled my money. So I sold for $90. I didn't have to send an offer, anything like that. Somebody just came along and paid full price. So it's true. I have not been running many sales lately and maybe I need to try that as well. I have been, I've been experimenting with a bunch of different things just to kind of see what it is that eBay kind of wants. I have been listing new things. Um, my husband's been busy with his construction work too. So we are listing less than in the winter months. So I know that does play a factor as well. Um, but we probably should run some sales again. We've been sending out offers. I 
for a little while I upped the percentage I was promoting. Then I stopped promoting with the percentage and I'm trying out their pay-per-click thing just to see if it's something like that where they just want you to try something different, you know. I don't know. We'll see. If nothing really works, then um, I'll just, you know, figure it's the economy and just keep cross-listing and keep focusing on maybe hard goods in some of the other shops and just see how that does. Okay, so let's go on to the next item. This was just a hat, a little bucket hat that we picked up somewhere. Picked it up because it was a bucket hat, kind of trendy. It sold for $12. Um, not a real like major brand or anything you need to know anything about, but camo is always a winner and a bucket hat. So $12, that was okay. This was, um, a very fast sale. This hat was by Roxy and I actually saw it at the thrift store once and I almost bought it and then I didn't buy it. <laughs> And then when I went to the thrift store again the next time, I said, you know what, it's still here. I'm gonna, I'm just going to get it. Because I was going to put it on like Depop or, you know, in Poshmark. And it's a very Y2K looking kind of hat. It has this, you know, um, very distressed looking, but embellished. And it had zipper pockets and flat pockets and all sorts of things. And I had it on eBay and I was getting ready. I think I cross posted it to Posh, but not to Depop yet. And it sold for full asking price of $20 on eBay. Very pretty, like actually fairly quickly. This is something my husband has. I don't know why he has it or where he got it. Sorry, I need to, I need to ask him about that. And um, I got to remember to ask him these things before I make these videos. But this just sold. Uh, he sent an offer for $30 and somebody took that. I just realized I missed one of my sales. It wasn't anything super exciting, but anyway, so there was not eight sales on eBay. There was nine. <laughs> okay. This next one, same thing, a super cool vintage denim, but it was Sears and it just was said Robux at the top, um, as the brand and it got some interest and in everything, but we kept getting really super low ball offers. So we ended up going back and forth with someone and settled on 25 for this. I knew when I picked it up, I just like the vintage denim and, you know, Sears Robux does not get the money like Levi's does or anything like that. So, um, 25, it was good. Let's just, we were like, let's move some stuff through. Next one, Nike Golf. My husband picked this up one time while we were thrifting and we figured it was kind of a cross collectible. It was for BNSF Railway, so we thought somebody might want it because of that. And it sold for that full price of $35, which was pretty good. Now the next one, just like it, like I didn't have sales for a couple days and then all of a sudden we get this full price sale and it totally cracked me up because this isn't a brand that I would normally pick up. It's Field and Stream. Um, I find stuff like this fairly often. I have a lot of outdoors and it's probably sold at Cabela's or something like that. But I remember being at the thrift store and we, um, I had kind of gone through the button shirts real quick and I saw this and I was like, well, Field and Stream, whatever. And then my husband was there with me that day and my son. And so my husband later, he shows me this shirt and he's like, look, Tim picked this out. Right. So our, our 11 year old, he's like, look what he found. And I was like, Oh, that's cool. You know? And I was like, it's actually, you know, it's a nice, it's a heavy weight. It's like a chamois shirt. And so it was, you know, good quality and it was new with tags and it was an extra large. So we're like, yep, yeah, let's go for it. So in May, like it's 85 degrees at our house and this heavy flannel shirt <laughs> sells for full asking price of $50. So I don't even know what the price was of the shirt originally. It might not have had a price. It just had a barcode on it. So anyway, you just never know. Some brands, if the item is kind of 
a good one, heavy duty, and then you can, you know, you get new with tags as a combo. Maybe don't overlook them like I would have. And yes, my son listed this one. I think my husband took the pictures. My son listed it, so he's going to get most of the money for that. And this, okay, since it's coming to this page, I will just go ahead and click on the one I missed the first time. So these were just a pair of another brand we wouldn't normally pick up, but these were uh, garage sale leftovers from our friends, and these sold for $27 was an offer, either countered or whatever. And that worked for us. Here's the, they're called Drew. And I guess they're orthotic type shoes. But I don't know, they're super cute. They got a zipper and everything. Okay, let's go to Posh. That was the excitement over on eBay. So on Posh, we had this vintage Home Depot hat. I thought it was pretty cool. It was made, I believe it was made in the USA, which is what made us, no, made in Taiwan. Okay, so we're talking 80s or whatever, 80s, 90s. And, um, yeah, so someone paid us $18 for that hat. Now, Levi's Silver Tabs. Silver Tabs can be really good. Here's a, you've got the Silver Tab over here. Now, these were just straight and re plus relaxed, um, we only picked these up a couple weeks ago, and I I was kind of hesitant. Are we detecting a theme here where I'm like, eh, I don't think so, and then my husband buys them, and they do really well. So he he's like, oh, I'm just going to go ahead and do it. I just had had more experience with the baggy ones, and what do they call them? Baggy? I, maybe relaxed was okay, but um, baggy definitely sells the best, right? And I had gotten a pair of silver tabs that were boot cut and they're still for sale. Cause like, you know, I took a chance on those and I was like, Oh no, I got to stick with the baggies. So when he saw these, I was like, oh, I don't know about that, but they sold for $56 on Poshmark. So what do I know? <laughs> uh, start second guessing myself. Okay. I sold a necktie. This didn't sell for a ton. It was just $16, but I picked it up because it was designer, Lanvin, Lanvin, and um, it had awesome colors, a lot of 70s things, 60s, 70s things are, you know, there's some movies out right now and, and things where this, you know, fashion is kind of getting on people's radar again. The problem was I listed it as, as is I got it home and I realized that, uh, now I forget the terminology. I used to know all the terminology of the parts of a tie, but the like interfacing stuff on the inside, I think was twisted. So if you could get it untwisted, it would lay flat again. And actually I like showed it to my husband who actually wears ties. So he knows, I said, if you wore it and knotted it, like, would it matter? And he was like, not necessarily like wear it, like it should be okay. But it was still an imperfection of the tie that I needed to mention. And I got, I sent an offer, got an offer for 16 and that was totally fine. I just thought it was pretty. Isn't that cool looking? Okay. Sold another hat for 20. Harley Davidson can hardly go wrong with Harley Davidson. Sold a pair of 511 tactical pants. These were possibly my son's. I don't know why he got rid of them. Maybe they got too, they were too short or something. But anyway, um, 511 Tactical. It does pretty well for us, especially the pants, the ripstop style fabric pants. And um, ripstop is that fabric that kind of looks like a grid, um, if you know what I'm talking about. And it's for a lot of tactical and outdoor wear things use ripstop fabric because it stops rips. Okay, this was actually really fun. So I saw these at the thrift store and I was like, no way. Look at these vintage shoes. I had a pair of these shoes in the 80s. And we're going to talk about that in a second. 
But then I found out as I looked the shoes over that these were still, that these were new, right? Eastlandshoes.com. Okay. So these are new shoes. They still make this shoe and they sell it at like Kohl's or whatever. And so these were new, you know, they were not like a vintage pair that I thought they were, but they still sold for $29. Now, what I just wanted to say is like, I wore these shoes and if you remember, I'm going to pop up a picture. Okay. Here's an ad or here's a picture of, of no. All right. I remember I found an ad and I'm going to share it right here. But the ad talks about the Eastland, like, what is it called? Eastland knot. So you, you didn't, when you wore these shoes, okay, maybe this is an East coast, very preppy. This is a very preppy, yuppie eighties kind of thing. And I talk about it with my friends here on the West coast and they're kind of like, eh, I don't, I don't quite remember it. And I don't know if it was more, you know, an East coast kind of thing. Yeah. It's called the Eastland knot. So I'm putting up the ad, the picture here. So you wouldn't tie your shoes like this. You would coil all the ends, right? And so this ad shows how there's like a diagram on how to make those coils. So when I finally got my shoes, I didn't, um, know how to do it. So my brother's friend did it for me and they stay right. Yeah. They never had to be redone or anything like that. So now you are going to have a rare glimpse of the, um, vintage pish posh <laughs> reseller. And here you go. 1989. Here I am. I found a picture of me wearing these shoes. Go ahead. Have your laughs. But what I want to point out was that this year when I was wearing the shoes, you know, the one showing it in the picture, it was all about the socks and tucking your pants into your socks and stuff like this. By the following year, it was no socks at all. So it was like, we went from double socks to no socks. And I wore these shoes an entire New York winter with no socks and it was cold. It really was. And my ankles probably got really chapped, but you would still kind of fold up your pants, but I would have, and then no socks and these shoes. Anyway, so I saw these shoes at the Goodwill and I was like, oh, they're my shoes, but I didn't keep them. I sold them. <laughs> Hope you all enjoyed that. Okay. Just a Justin, the Justin Boots Company Western. I just happened to find this wallet that looked like brand new and I listed it or my husband listed it and we cross posted it and it sold on posh for 15. Now the next two items were bundled. So they made the bundle and then purchase. So I have an automatic bundle offer set up for 10%, but most of the time people make bundles and they want an even better deal. But this lady just bundled got her discount and purchased. So it's $14 minus 10% for this troll coffee mug that, um, was from Norway. And then she also bought this hat. It's a vintage Les Schwab hat, but it has a logging truck on it, which was kind of cool. So that sold for 15 minus the 10% and she bought them together. I like when people bundle, they don't bundle that often for me. This scarf was by Ralph Lauren. And, um, it has this awesome lion crest. Now I found this in my profit pile one day a while back, we were kind of going through stuff in the garage and I was like, Oh, this scarf, like, why don't I have this listed? And uh, it turns out I did list it at one time a long time ago on eBay, Etsy, and it never sold. And so it ended up somehow back in the, to be listed pile. And so I put it on eBay, put it on posh and I got a $50 offer on posh. So I went ahead and took that. This is another line of Birkenstock sandals. It's called Tatami or Tatami, Tatami. And the, these were kind of small. They were marked a size 36, which is technically like a five to a six, but they fit me. 
which I'm more like six and a half to seven. So I think there's some leeway a lot of times with these kind of flat sandals, you know, a few different sizes might be able to fit in them or they just run big. I don't know how that works. So I have not heard anything about it. So hopefully those shoes, I'm not sure if they're delivered yet. Are they delivered yet? Did I just ship them today? That's possible. Okay. Anyway, we'll see. Hopefully they don't come back. And then just a quick little beanie sale, North Face waffle knit sold for 15. And then speaking of my son and his shirt purchases, we were, he was in a, I want to resell mode. I think he wanted some cash for something. And he wanted to go to the thrift store with me and he was like, wanted to look at shirts and he kept wanting to buy shirts that I'm like, yeah, they're cool, but they're just not going to sell very quickly. And I, you know, sometimes he gets, he'd get so frustrated if things like take years and years to sell, no matter how cool they are. So I kept trying to steer him towards other shirts. And then finally he like went around to another row and then that was sticking out. I'm like, what's that? And so it's a PFG shirt, Columbia PFG, which is their fishing line. Now we, like I personally have pretty much stopped picking up Columbia PFG shirts. I know they're kind of supposed to be good, but the solid ones just are, even the larger sizes are just 15 to 20. And if I can't find them cheap, which most of the time I'm buying at the regular thrift store where they're going to be at least five to six dollars, um, you know, Goodwill, they start raising the prices according to season. And anyway, um, but this one, I was like, this one's really cool. So I said, I told him, I said, I would get that one. And it was an extra large. It had kind of a fish hook design mixed in with the plaid and everything. And it sold for $30. So he did pretty good. I think he bought, maybe he bought another shirt that day too. It was the 511 tactical polo that I think we sold last week or the week before. So I think he's got some money coming to him. Okay, let's hop over to Ruby Lane. I've been trying to make a special effort on Ruby Lane. Um, anyway, Pish Posh Vintage, that's who I am over there. And I had this box I picked up at a thrift store. And it was, it's a red lacquer um, box. And then this inlay right here was Jade. So it was really cool. It was not perfect. It had lots of little chips and things in the box, but it just was too awesome. See, it would have this like, veneer, like, I don't know what you call that veneer or something like that on the outside and pieces like chunks of that were missing. And yeah, you can see in this corner as well. So pretty much all the corners had issues. But it was really awesome looking and someone paid $40 for it. So I thought that was exciting. And then another sale that I really liked in my Ruby Lane shop was this mid-century tablecloth. And I picked this up at Goodwill. I was totally shocked it was just sitting there. Super mid-century. Simtex is a good vintage uh, tablecloth brand. Um, it has a name. It's called Espana. And it was no iron, pink, 51 by 52, so kind of squarish. But you can see, you know, pinks and golds and everything like that. So look at that chair. That's awesome. Anyway, that's kind of more of what the pattern looked like. And it didn't take that long. I listed it for 45 and I don't know, less than a week or so it sold. So that was fun. Now my next one is a really good sale. It's a, it's pending still because the buyer is sending me a money order. So he said he mailed it. So hopefully it'll show up in the next day or two. And then I will go ahead and cash it. Probably if it's a postal money order, I'll take it to the post office and I'll cash that and ship out this 
um, cup and saucer. Now, this was such a fun find. Just a regular thrift store. It's just sitting on the shelf. And anything railway that is like restaurant wear, railway related, I just love that kind of stuff. And railway stuff can do really good, especially if it's a railway that is no longer running, which is true of this. It got merged into something else. Okay, so what I found from my research on this was that it was, let's see if I have it down here. Okay, let me show you the picture of the, like the saucer says the Olympian on it. And then we have the little logos, the Chicago, Milwaukee, Puget Sound railway is on the inside of the cup. It has this awesome like Greek key design and it was made, it was Bavarian, Burley and Company, Chicago. Okay. So the people who collect keep track of these things. And I found a guy with a database of restaurant China, railway China, and they had this mug made by different people or produced by different people. And so I messaged him when I found this a while back and told him, I showed him pictures and he's like, Oh wow, thank you so much. And he wanted to add the pictures to his database, which I'm not sure that he ever did. He said he was, he needed his son to, to ma who manages the database to do it for him. But he just said it was very exciting to him, you know, as a collector to see a different variation of a, cup and saucer that they thought they knew all the variations of. Anyway, um, so I found out the railway merged that year of 1913. So this cup and saucer has to be from before 1913. And I found out from his website that this cup and saucer was given to, so on the, on the train, they would have tea time and a customer or a passenger woman would be asked to be the hostess of tea time on that trip and or a certain day or whatever. And this was a gift that she was given for acting as hostess on the railway. Isn't that awesome? This is why I love vintage because like there's stories and there's history and they don't do stuff like that as far as I know anymore. So very lovely. Okay, so when hopefully his money order comes and, you know, this guy was not the guy with the website. They were two different guys as far as I know. But anyway, he is sending a money order for $75 for that cup and saucer. Popping over to my husband's Etsy shop, we picked this up, mug up a couple weeks ago. He sold it for 14 I don't know. What do you think? Should I have him watch my coffee mug video? Do you think we could have gotten more for this? I think so. I think I would have asked like 20, but anyway, I don't monitor his shop because I don't, you know, he sells things for more than I would ask for and some things it would be less. So it all evens out, but it is pretty cool mug, nice and big and yeah, super cool. And it moved quickly. So we can't argue with that $14 plus shipping. And then another sale was this little book that I picked up and I just, I like picking up um, books with mid-century graphics and they do seem to do pretty well on Etsy. So $10, the little paperback book from the sixties about camping, and which is usually a vintage camping is kind of a popular little theme. So, okay. And then in the pattern shop, we sold this a mail order pattern by Ann Adams sold for $20. Um, you'll see in my listings, I use volup. So voluptuous. So whenever you're dealing with plus size pattern, that's a good keyword to use. And it, these, this is from the forties or fifties. Um, anyway, sold for $20 and a Vogue pattern for 14. This one I listed not that long ago, actually. So it sold pretty quickly. Now the flatware shop actually did pretty well this week. Um, what was interesting is that I think I'm going to sneeze. Um, Etsy seems to be, I've noticed this in the past that if, um, 
if I get a sale on Etsy, then I'll probably get another sale fairly soon after. So it's kind of like if, you know, you get a sale, even if you're not working your shop or anything, but like you get a sale and then it kind of bumps you as being relevant. Your listings get a little bit of a bump, then you have another sale and then you might have another sale after that. And then it might go quiet for a bit, but anyway. Okay. So the first sale I want to mention in the Etsy shop is this set. I just found these 18 pieces of this one pattern by Oneida. The brand is Northland or the brand is Oneida. The line, they, it's just marked Northland, but it's Oneida who does it. So, um, if you've seen my flatware video, I think I talked about that. Oneida, some of the different names that Oneida goes by. Um, I do have to revisit those flatware videos. I don't know if there were still some things I was gonna like make videos on. I'm not sure. So I got to go back and kind of watch those again and see where the gaps are or anything. But if you haven't seen it, I will go ahead and link it probably at the end of this video if you want to check that out. Okay. So o Oneida Northland, 18 pieces sold for $54. And I think what I did is I just went ahead and did $3 a piece. That's how I came up with that number. And then this nice little set, just two serving utensils. Um, the brand is, is, well, they're marked Lion. Here's another one. It's marked Lion, but um, L-Y-O-N. But Lion is one of the names that International Silver uses for their stainless, for some of their stainless pieces. And these were so mid-century. These were very, um, the name was Cortez or Aztec. They're very brutalist looking and very mid-century modernist. So that was awesome. So just the two pieces sold for $24. And then Oneida Community. These were um, iced tea spoons. So long, nice long handles. These were called, the pattern is called flight. Now there's another Oneida flight pattern that's like super common and they like, they still make it and it's super popular, but this is the older vintage pattern flight looks totally different than the other one. And this actually was a repeat buyer. So somebody bought something. Oh, hold on. I was thinking it was the week before, but no, the buyer who bought this a couple days later bought these. So definitely looking for the mid-century stuff is what I'm thinking. And then last, I can't really show you exactly the sale, but I can show you the listing because again, it's a variation listing. And again, if you need to know how to do variation listings on Etsy, I made a video about that. And so we've got, this person came in, this was really good. They came in and bought 18 pieces from my drop down menus and they paid $117 for their 18 pieces. Now, if I had bundled, I would have not gotten as much. So you definitely might take a little longer, but you definitely, people can pick exactly what they want, which pieces they want, and they end up paying a little bit more, but, but they get with exactly what they want. So I am going to go ahead and right here at the end, I'm going to link up my flatware video and my Etsy variation video. So I hope you guys all had a great week and we will see you later on this week. And I, you know, as usual, it's a what sold video. Go ahead and leave a comment below as to what you sold this week that was noteworthy or you're just happy to be rid of it or it was a really good sale or such. Or just let me know how sales have been for you lately. Okay, everybody. Talk to you later.